<laughs> you are too much. <laughs> Gwe Gwe, Wajia, bonjour. Bienvenue à nos podcasts très spéciaux. We are just behind the Quebec stage. Tonight, uh, Nikamata Neu Show will take place there. But at the same time, at the Cinema du Musée, there is poor people from Montreal. They won't be able to choose between the show and between the film because tonight, also at uh, eight uh, o'clock, we will have uh, We Are Unarmed, a film about uh, the resistance uh, against uh, Dakota Pipeline. They call it Dakota Pipelines. That's a terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the uh, director of the documentary traveled to Montreal to uh, come and present uh, this uh, this important work. So uh, be uh, very, very uh, welcome, Gwendolyn Cates. Can you uh, tell us in a few words who you are and uh, what is uh, your uh, background and uh, and film photography uh, literature and uh, <laughs> you you, uh, you are uh, pretty uh, active in your life <laughs> yes yes well merci beaucoup to mm. m'avoir invité au festival it's wonder i'm very honored to be here my french is really rusty so i'll leave it there <laughs> um, but yes, I love this festival and I'm so happy to be back again. Um, so let's see. Well, I'm originally a photographer mm -hmm. and a professional photographer, and I did that for many years. And then I transitioned into documentary filmmaking. So this, this film, We Are Unarmed, I lived uh, at Standing Rock. Um, for a total of three months, I was filming, spread out over uh, from September to when the camp was evacuated mm -hmm. in February. And so I was not living at the camp itself. I was living up at the casino lodge at the Tripass. Um, and it was uh, an experience that was, you know, I had spent time in Iraq. I was uh, embedded with the US military during the invasion of Iraq. And when they started to put up the concrete barriers and do other military sort of movements, I kept saying, this reminds me of Iraq. This, and I, later I realized I was having actual flashbacks, but it was the same tactics. But I said, now we are all the Iraqis, all of us on the other mm -hmm. side of the, of the barriers concrete barriers so it was it was really um you know they were doing what you see in in a, a war zone in an official war zone mm -hmm. so uh it was uh united states again uh, the the lakota people in the sense yes everybody who was on the wrong side mm -hmm. in their opinion so that means the you know, the Lakota, the, the Ocheti Shakui mm -hmm. people and and allies. And, mm -hmm. and it's always been like that when you look back through history mm -hmm. um, in the United States. So absolutely. And, and one thing that's in the film that I thought was very, very important was the historical context, which is so on the surface there in South Dakota and, and you know, increasingly, um, certainly in the U.S. And, and certainly in the U.S. anyway. But that historical context, Custer, General Custer, mm. lived in Mandan, which is where the sheriff was who was really orchestrating the, uh, the, the very severe um, pushback uh, actions against Ocheti Shakui. Mm -hmm. And so it was this, you know, almost reenactment and that that incredible anger and resentment about the defeat towards the uh, Ocheti Shakui, about the defeat of Custer mm -hmm. and the Seventh Cavalry, I feel is is very much alive. It is still simmering 
Mm. You know, you really feel it. Yes. So yes. it was like history repeating itself. Um, you know, we're going to get you again. Remember Wounded Knee. I mean, it was, you know, it hasn't, it's not that long ago when you think about it. No, it's not. not Historically, that long ago. It's, uh, it's not even one century ago. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, what uh, is your particular approach? Because, uh, of course, we know that such a big event with uh, international uh, solidarity and many uh, natives coming from everywhere to support the, the fight of Lakota people, uh, the uh, uh, clash with uh, the uh, American government and the American army, and, of course, the, the multinational that was... Uh, 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 that wanted uh, to, to, to pass the pipeline uh, uh, on uh, Lakota territory. There is many ways to uh, uh, picture the, 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 the situation, which, what was your uh, main, uh, as a director, your main uh, uh, way of uh, looking at it when, uh, when beyond the camp? Well, I think it's actually important to mention, and I forget to mention um, usually, that when I went there, I did not go there with the intention of making a film at all. Mm. Uh, you know, Labor Day weekend was when there was the, the dogs attacking, the, you know, out at that, at that site, mm. and there was a call by the people there for... Uh, people like myself, I mean, they didn't ask me personally, but to come and document, mm -hmm. we need people to come and document what's happening. And I had, I had um, spent time up at Standing Rock uh, before. Um, and I had actually been invited to on the, the Bigfoot ride. Mm -hmm. the, when it, I'd been on it a couple of times when it originated at Standing Rock back in, uh, 2000 something anyway i don't remember so i felt you know really that i should go mm. like i should really go out there but i just went to document and that's what i did at first and my film the good mind was was had just been released and so mm. i was sort of going to festivals and then coming back and and then again i was not i was not i was supporting I was documenting, I was supporting, and then I started to, um, you know, I just couldn't help myself. I started to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to film, but I, I really started to film individuals, you know, and what was going on, and then, and then it, you know, turned into, because I was, what I was seeing is that the mainstream media was, and this will happen often, you know, they were thrown into this, and you know, all of a sudden expected to, you know, they didn't really understand treaties. Mm -hmm. They weren't that familiar with the historical context. This is the And like so I that's what treaty. I thought, the treaties. I the mean, tr uh, treaties, I thought. Treaties in general. Yeah. yeah in general. Right. So yeah. it was something that they weren't that familiar with. And mm -hmm. I thought that, that Standing Rock was being kind of, you know, sometimes sensationalized or even romanticized, but these, you know, really, really important issues of treaties that are, in mm. fact, the supreme law of the land according to the U.S. Constitution and that historical landscape and context were being overlooked. And actually, that's what motivated me finally to mm -hmm. say, okay, I'm, I'm making a film. And, and that was what I thought was so you know, would be um, important to focus on, really. And uh, why this this title, We Are Unarmed? Because there was always a We Are an Arm sign mm -hmm. or banner there at that camp. Mm -hmm. There's there's one image that I have that's of, you know, it's it's like a big white banner, you know, homemade banner that was on this fence. Mm -hmm. But there's a couple of other moments in the film where you see it, mm. and that was just always a statement at that camp, we are unarmed. And then I thought this is the perfect title because it really says so much mm. about what 
um, Ochiti Shakui, uh, mm -hmm. and everyone on, on, you know, this side of the concrete barriers are dealing with, okay? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh, the, the, the film will uh, be uh, screened tonight. And uh, I think that, uh, yeah, that was important. Uh, you understand that uh, the people wanted to know, to let know that uh, they were, it was a pacific uh, uh, resistance by the people, not uh, uh, the other way it was uh, the army. So uh, obviously armed uh, agent. And on the other side, the, the people uh, bare hand in front of that uh, uh, aggression from the from the army, and the aggression was just extraordinary when it really started to to turn to that when they realized that this was getting international attention, mm. and you know it was a it was a very beautiful um, gathering, you know, and all these different nations and tribes came mm. to show their support, and the, I was not there unfortunately when the crow. Mm. came and apologized, you know, because there's been that, I, I wish mm. I'd been there, but all of that was extremely moving. And it was the first time, as Phyllis Young says in the, in the film, that, that we have been gathered here for, you know, so, so many years. Mm. And I think that was very threatening. It was, it was, and so they decided to crack down on that. And um, mm. it was it was really extraordinary what they what they did, and mm. you know we we saw you know that that continued in other situations mm. um, with BLM, et cetera, uh, Ferguson, um, mm. but yeah, what they did, and there was there was a lot of infiltration with bad mm. actors. Mm -hmm. There, I, I didn't get into that in this film. That's kind mm -hmm. of a whole nother film um, that I don't know if anybody would ever do that, but you know, I, I can um, probably, it was, uh, it was really, really something yes, to think about. Course. But the film I'm working on now, I don't know if we have time to. Yes, let's go, okay. let's speak about it. <laughs> just, uh, uh, I just want to uh, remember uh, everybody that when you come to uh, Présence Stockton, would it be for a concert, for a film, for another event? You are part of an indigenous experience and part, of course, of uh, the native people's resistance to uh, colonialism, to the, the will of uh, erase our uh, cultures and our language. We are uh, now taking slowly taking back what uh, has been taken from us and uh, standing rock the, the the battle was certainly one uh, of the moment important moment of uh, uh, i like the name standing rock right we, we stand for uh, uh, what we are and uh, we are solid like rock and uh, uh, many uh, indigenous from canada and from quebec uh, Natasha Canepi Fontaine, right, the, the Innu writer, was there and uh, she, she was film uh, in the, uh, the the film by uh, Santiago, um, well, by the director of uh, the film about uh, 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 Moncri, uh, uh, about uh, the Natasha Canepi Fontaine, Santiago Bertolino. Yeah, did the, this uh, beautiful film. So, this is something that is not that far away. Standing Rock, it's uh, really part of our own uh, reality as indigenous of North America, of course, and also as uh, Canadian, because uh, uh, we we are. This is the same uh, land and the same fight that we have. So, please come, and we have a very, very, very talented person before going to the next film i i cannot resist to do some names dropping when i saw your biography you have photographed alec baldwin leonardo dicaprio uh madeleine albright well madeleine albright. anyway madeleine, rosa parks 
of Rassalt Park, etc. So, uh, and uh, you were uh, connected. Two days down. Mm -hmm. That's what I get by my past life. <laughs> yes. And uh, your photo has been published in uh, the Rolling Stone in uh, uh, many, uh, in time, uh, in uh, many uh, famous American uh, magazines. Wow. That's what I, I used to do. Okay. Yeah. And now. I had one cover of Rolling Stone. Wow. Yes, that was that was real, of Kevin Costner when Dances Ooh. with Wolves came out. Okay, so it was related to the indigenous uh, people. But you too. know what? It it was the the assignment was completely unrelated. Okay. But it just happened to be when he he did that. Wow. Yeah. But then I I shot Rodney Grant for Entertainment Weekly, mm -hmm. and who else? Yeah, so that's what I used to do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, now you, uh, uh, well, you are filming uh, uh, other uh, stars and other uh, actors, uh, but uh, on the, the real ground of history, no more in the, 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 the fiction uh, of... Uh, this is much, I would much rather be doing mm -hmm. this, much rather. But I had, I mean, just my, my father lived on the Navajo mm -hmm. uh, Nation before, uh, for the two years before I was born mm -hmm. and had very close friends. And so that's where this all started because he spoke the language fluently, Denebizad. Wow. And it's so when I was born, language. he, would, he yeah. would speak Denebizad, you know, just around the house. And, and then took me and my siblings out there when we were little so so that's really where this all started yeah okay. and uh and the next film is very related to uh, the uh, recent uh, in history uh, indigenous experience the one of uh, colonialism can you speak about it and all of this, Standing Rock, mm -hmm. all of it is about colonialism. And the film that I'm working on now is also very relevant to Standing mm -hmm. Rock um, because it's all about land mm -hmm. and why that is, you know, an issue and why treaties aren't honored. So mm -hmm. it's all about the doctrine of discovery. And that is the film that I've been working on mm -hmm. since early 2018. And I, it's called The Doctrine. And um, I have filmed in the US, I followed a group of, filmed a group of indigenous youth who were the first youth, indigenous youth to have a meeting at the Vatican to discuss the doctrine of discovery. And what are you going to do about it to the Vatican? And I filmed in New Zealand and in Guatemala, where there's mm -hmm. a case that which is challenging one of the central tenets of the Doctrine of Discovery, which is terra nullius, mm -hmm. land that was occupied by indigenous people was was considered empty land. Yeah, nobody's land. Yeah. Nobody's land. Yeah, empty land. Mm -hmm. And and. Uh, even New Caledonia, and uh, I recently went to uh, Spain and Portugal to film original papal bulls with a young indigenous woman who was at the Vatican meeting. Um, and so the film is getting close to being done. It's very exciting, but there's also discussion of in the film of when the doctrine of discovery was incorporated into U.S. law in a Supreme Court case mm. that is the basis of all property law in the United States, and the case is called Johnson v. McIntosh, and that was in 1823. And next year, 2023, is the 200th anniversary of this Supreme Court case. And so the, um, the professor who literally wrote the book about the case is interviewed and believes that it can be that can be overturned but canada australia new zealand and other countries use this supreme court case as precedent as the mm -hmm. basis for the how they for yeah. do you, you know uh, 
denying indigenous land mm. rights, but it's all about that doctrine of discovery, that 15th century papal law that, that indigenous peoples can have the right of occupancy only to their own ancestral territory. Mm. And of course, indigenous peoples are about 5% of the population and are the caretakers of 80% of the bio, remaining biodiversity on the planet. So it's a very important issue. Yes, and it uh, has been uh, around here very recently because uh, many persons were expecting the Pope to uh, call out the, the, the discovery doctrine, but he didn't. Uh, and uh, for that many, many people are not fully happy with uh, the, the presence of uh, Francois, who uh, did not, in a sense, uh, really uh, go deep enough in uh, the, the, uh, his, uh, the pardon he was asking yeah, for. And I, you know, he knows about it. Obviously. And I think he, like, he set up that, the, um, there was a synod or synod about mm. the Amazon in 2019, in the fall of 2019. Mm. He knows the connection Obviously. with the climate crisis, which and he's it, so concerned yeah. with. I don't know, are there these very powerful dark forces in the church who are like, absolutely no mm -hmm. way is it the Vatican attorneys who say, we do not want to set ourselves up for this kind of liability. I mean, I think it's going to happen at one point, but I, I think, I, I, I think, but, and they say that it was rescinded and that's not true. Mm -hmm. Back no. in the 16th century, just FYI, that's not true. <laughs> so I don't know if he is. I'm hoping that this film mm -hmm. that will bring more attention to you know the broad audience about this issue, and so that that will you know the the movement will gain more support. Okay. So uh, we uh, cannot wait to uh, see not only the, your more recent uh, release film, but the next one. Uh, we hope that uh, we will have the privilege uh, to uh, screen it in Montreal. Uh, during... I would be honored. Uh, yeah. it, and we will be very <laughs> honored too. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you. It's time to, to get ready for the, the, the screening tonight. You may meet uh, your friend, Alanis of Seven. She has a film. Oh, just there fail. The... Just fail. Okay. okay. If you're listening, Alanis. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you everybody and uh, keep in touch. Uh, we are on the Place des Festivals. Uh, we, are, we have a lot of activities since uh, August uh, 18. Alors, uh, jusqu'au 18 août, c'est le Festival international présence autochtone à Montréal avec des tonnes d'activités, des moments inoubliables à vivre, des rencontres extraordinaires à faire. Alors, uh, uh, Regardez bien la, la programmation, choisissez le meilleur pour vous et vous pouvez être sûr que vous ne serez pas déçus. Merci. Merci beaucoup.